I'm sure you heard about African proverb. If you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. And this is community. Commune together, get together, inspire each other, support each other. We are here all together. We can break through these challenging times only together, as one. More than 3 billion people in almost 70 countries and territories have been asked to stay at home. Fast-breaking developments in the coronavirus emergency in the U.S. and around the world. At least two dozen dead, more than 12 million acres destroyed. You can destroyed. see all the areas that they're dealing with wildfires. tens of thousands from their homes. Thousands of thousands of protesters gathered. We are not in this fight! George Floyd was the match that lit this explosion of violence. It's now taken a life of its own. In Pakistan are facing their worst plague of locusts. It sounds biblical, but as the world grapples with the COVID pandemic, the continent of Africa what is facing another plague. could be worse than a plague of locusts? These things can even be deadly to humans. The virus infections are approaching 80 million Researchers worldwide. say we need to be ready for the next one. If you think 2020 is done being cruel to you, wait till you hear the next story. It's been a hectic year, to say the least. And like many others, I started to grow unsettled and unsure about what the future would bring. I began to lose control of my thoughts and got sucked into an endless black hole of negativity. I knew I needed to change, but how? As if a sign from above, I came across something called breathwork. I had no idea what it was or how it could help me, but I felt the need to dig deeper. I decided to reach out to professionals to help me learn and understand more. All right, so you just wanna sit down, relax. Focus on your breathing, slow it right down, deep breaths in, slow exhale. Just listen to the sound of the chime. Just feel your body responding to the cold, getting stronger, become more resilient. Inflammation is leaving your body. The immune system is responding. Remember, whenever you feel ready, like it's been enough to stand up strong and tall, sending a signal to your body. It is getting stronger. The one thing that is just I want to make clear is that breathwork has been around for thousands of years. The ancient yogis. Um, we're studying this for thousands of years, developed a lot of techniques that are pretty much in all of these practices you find today that have you know, sort of resurfaced once again. So they call it pranayama. Uh, prana, which is the life force, ayama, um, is like the breath of within. So it's like this sort of loose translation about breath and life and to live. But the real magic is in the everyday breathing mechanics. You know, how people breathe on a daily basis. Are they breathing properly? Are they breathing up in their chest? Are they breathing too quickly? How many breaths per minute are they doing? Are they breathing through their nose? Are they breathing through their diaphragm? And so there's a lot of practices that can help train people on that. And so when you breathe better and you improve what they call is like a CO2 tolerance, and I'll just explain this real quick. Um, most people think carbon dioxide is a waste gas, but really it's not, it's a very important um, gas in the body because what it does is it transfers oxygen from the red blood cells into the tissues. Okay? Some people just think breathing more. The more you actually breathe, the less carbon dioxide you have because you're expelling it and your hemoglobin holds on to oxygen. So you have a lot of oxygen in your blood and you won't have oxygen into the uh, cells, tissues, organs, stuff like that. 
So what I try to teach people and what I start realizing is, yeah, people are coming to these weekly classes where they're having these experiences, but their breathing mechanics are still really crappy. And so when you breathe better and you breathe through your nose and you slow your breathing rate down, there's all kinds of benefits that come. So you regulated nervous system, less anxiety, less stress, better mood, um, your ability to deal with stressful situations uh, improves. So when, you're, when things are going crazy and you can control your breath. And breathing is like, like this thing that we can control that will affect the, the nervous system. You know, they say the nervous system's autonomous, meaning that it acts on its own, like breathing is autonomic process, but we can manipulate it. We can control the way we breathe. And we can train ourselves to breathe better. We can train ourselves, you know, when we feel anxious or nervous to sort of focus on our breathing and reprogram our minds to understand like, hey, we don't need to freak out right now. Because a lot of things in our life that really uh, bother us are things that are not happening at the moment, things we're thinking about in the future, things we're worrying about in the past. And it creates this chronic stress syndrome that most people experience, where they're always in a state of stress. And by just breathing differently, they can slow down their heart rate, they can reduce the stress hormones that are present in the body. So the simple of it is, is just to breathe through your nose, into your diaphragm, so not up high in the chest, and to slow down your breathing. When you exhale, it slows the heart rate down. When you inhale, it increases heart rate. When every day, if we're just breathing unconsciously, quickly over breathing, it's like the body's in this state of stress all the time. So we're sending that signal. So us being able to sort of uh, reprogram that through changing the way we breathe will affect all these aspects of our life. Help us sleep better, um, lower your heart rate, have less stress, and so on and so forth. Clarity. Clarity is what connects us, if you will, our soul and our purpose. And this connection coming from breath, that's what I believe. I'm gonna ask you right now to sit as straight as possible. Notice your seat bones with inhale lengthen from your crown and rest one hand right below your navel and second hand right in the middle of your chest. So your top hand will give you an indication if you're inhaling through your chest. The bottom hand will give you an indication if you're inhaling from your belly. What I'm going to ask you is to keep your chest as still as possible and inhaling and exhaling from your belly. Inhale into your belly, inflate your belly and exhale, deflate your belly, take your belly all the way in. Close your eyes, continue, inhale slowly, just get the mechanic and get the feeling. And in a few breaths, you will feel when it's time. I want you to release your hands down on your lap and continue belly breathing without your hand on your belly and on your chest. Beautiful. Continue to observe your breath Yet I want you to keep your right hand on your chest. Continue to breathe into your belly as slow as you can and as deeply as you can and observe the movement of your diaphragm. With your mind's eye, you can turn your gaze inside and you know how your diaphragm looks like. It's a dome-shaped muscle that's moving up and down. When you're inhaling, the diaphragm moving down. When you exhale, the diaphragm moving up. So visualize, imagine, and whenever you're ready, with your next inhale, inhale into your belly and sequentially inhale into your chest. And now I want you to expand your belly and your chest. Beautiful. And as you exhale, exhale very, very slow. Now in your next inhale, keep your shoulders down as you inhale. To the best of your ability, inhale into your side ribs, and back ribs. Beautiful. That's it. Keep your shoulders relaxed. And well, now bring a visual of lungs to your heart right in the middle, your lungs on the both sides of your heart, and your diaphragm moving. As you inhale, everything is expanding, and you allow space and capacity to all of these organs to expand as much as they need. And as you exhale, you allow all of these organs to be compressed. And you're going to continue for one more deep inhale and one more exhale. When you consistently practice breath work, 
you start to tap into that infinite energy that helping you to move forward in your life, to create, to experience abundance, and really get in touch with gratitude. Gratitude, it's a vitamin for your soul. What I'm gonna ask you right now, it's to inhale as deeply as you can with your eyes closed. I've been testing and practicing these specific breath work techniques and being really cautious of my breathing on, on the fundamental level, on like a day-to-day -day basis of breathing um, diaphragmatic through my stomach and obviously only through my nose as much as I could. Um, I'd say for about two months now. And uh, just in this two month period, I've, I've, I've really been able to, like I said, just be more present in my day-to-day -day stuff, be more clear um, in what I'm doing in my life, whether it's work-based, relationship-based. Um, I'm able to calm my mind down if I'm in a business meeting or if I'm uh, getting into an argument in a relationship or anything that's going on. I'm, I'm, I've really noticed the, the pause and, and the calmness of going through these techniques and breathing where it's like, okay, Matt, what's actually truly happening here? Calm down, what's going on? Instead of just, like I said before, you're just going through the motion. Um, your habits would come out, your past habits of just, okay, this is usually how Matt would respond and, and I would just respond and, and, and just go through the life uh, of the motion. But then when you start really actually picking up on these little subtle cues of just, okay, slowing your breathing, relaxing, being, being more present in what's going on, it gives you some time to yourself to actually really think and realize, okay, how do you want to proceed? How do you want to move forward? How do you want to respond? Um, so it's helped me tremendously, just even that aspect alone, uh, just being more present and uh, being able to understand, okay, what's going on? How do I want to respond? And then how to move forward. Getting into the whole aspect of the cold exposure, extremely out of my comfort zone. Uh, I was speaking with Genya about, I would say a month ago. He brought up cold exposure, where he gave me a little bit of a regimen, where it's like, okay, you can start with cold showers um, and start getting acclimated a bit to the cold temperature and, and just kind of diving a bit deeper, where he explained so many of the benefits of cold exposure. I was unsure about it. I was nervous about it. Uh, when he told me that I'm going to be jumping into a lake, I was very, very hesitant. I still am nervous, I won't lie. But now it's like, okay, if I could put myself through this whole thing, what else can I be doing? Like, how many more benefits of, of, of life can I do? The body is always trying to sort of keep you safe, even the mind. You know, like it's trying to always keep you safe and out of discomfort and keep you in certainty. What they really doesn't like is uncertainty or danger. So when you go into an ice bath for the first time, the body's sending this response off through the systems like danger, panic, get out of here. What does it do? It makes you start breathing really quickly. <laughs> People like start breathing very shallow and quickly. Um, but again, like what I spoke about earlier about you can control your breath. If you just slow the breathing down, you let your body know, listen, I'm safe right now. I'm not in a dangerous situation. Um, I can get out of here whenever I need to, whenever I'm ready, and I'm just gonna relax. And when you start breathing and start telling yourself that, the body will then settle in. And for some people, it takes 15 to 30 seconds. But once you get there, what we find is the mind just sort of stops and you're in this present moment state. And then there's all these things that happen after. Like it, there's this dump of these um, endorphins into the body. Um, you get out and you just feel really good. So it's a mood enhancer, the cold. People that have done this over time, it's helped them deal with depression and anxiety because of these endorphins that get, that get released and these hormones that get released in the body that improve the mood. I had my first overdose when I was 18 years old. Um, didn't scare me, I kept going on. Then uh, things just escalated. Um, I have thyroid conditions, so I had to do a couple eye surgeries um, when I was 20, which started with uh, the Oxycontin and stuff like that, and it just worked its way to heroin, fentanyl. Then I started doing IV use, and that's when the overdoses started just piling up. And in rehab, something clicked. I wanted to change, so that was number one. That was the most important thing. I needed to change. Um, and then I got into meditation, and I started meditating every day. 
two and a half years ago in a snowmobile accident. I smashed a snowmobile. Uh, I broke my spine. Three days they convinced me not to do the surgery because um, the bones were shattered around my cord and they were scared that when they were moving it, um, they could hit it and I could be paralyzed. So I had signed paperwork and stuff, so they were giving me like an 80% chance of walking again. And um, I went ahead with the surgery because I told them I'm not going on pain meds. I'd rather be in a wheelchair than back on drugs. I could literally say that I'm on no pain meds and I have bolts and rods in my spine and my pain meds is the cold exposure. My first introduction to breath work was actually uh, through a Google search where I found a guy by the name of Wim Hof. And at the time that I sort of reached out to Wim, it was, it was just a coincidence that they just had started this facilitator training program and I was the only real Canadian who was invited or signed up for it at that time. Hi ah. right, Wim, good to be with you again. It's a video here, not a picture. Just, just yeah. say something. Yeah. It's a video. <laughs> yeah. And we spent a week together, jumping in frozen lakes, climbing frozen mountains, and um, hearing stories from all these people about how the breathing and cold just absolutely changed their lives. And starting to reflect on, you know, maybe some of the changes that have happened in my life since I started. So people that had cured themselves from diseases that um, otherwise are like incurable by Western medicine standards, um, anxiety, depression, um, fear, um, having confidence, um, autoimmune diseases that were, were going away or significantly reduced, and I thought, wow, you know, something really powerful here. My whole upbringing was extremely different to what I'm doing now. I was never open to this personal development stuff. It was just a guy going through the motions of life. Jenny introduced me to this book called The, Sur the Surrender Experiment, where it's pretty much the whole premise of the book is just kind of agreeing to the flow of life and just kind of going through the process and acknowledging certain things that are happening, but not fighting it and uh, bend your knees and start shaking, like you're being electrified. Yeah, that's it. Remember, as you're shaking, uh, release your legs, loosen up your hips. Yeah, that's it. And begin increasing and dialing up. So glue your feet and now imagine you're being electrified. Um, which kind of took me for a little bit of a spin at the moment. <clears throat> you want to get into that stage of exhaustion from, from being electrified. So imagine now I'm plugging into you 800 volt. What is it gonna feel like? Beautiful. What about 2,000 volt? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Keep going. Five, four, 200,000 watt for five seconds. Yeah. And jump, jump really. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. Now stop. And feel the body. Notice your heartbeat. Your breath is now a little bit more short. Don't try to control your breath. Just let your body to breathe. Trust your body. And now we have an opportunity to land in this vessel, this body that been with you since your day one, the temple for your soul. And from that experience, you may allow your true intention. The guidance comes from within. If you're gonna put an intention and consistent work with that simple exercise, you're gonna experience benefits. And the fun part of it, that you'll be eager to do more. It's a great way to just kinda of pause and then it really slows down the pace of, of life. There's techniques to breathing. There's ways you should be breathing on a daily basis. They're benefiting so many people's lives on a deeper level. And cold exposure, the benefits of it are, are endless, are endless. On the day of the plunge, my nerves really started to kick in. I've never done anything like this before. 
Jenny and Gio taught me so much about breath work. And now it's time to put what I learned to the test. The old me would have passed on this, but I wanted to go deeper, to relate, to understand, and to continue my journey of wellness. I knew it required one simple step that I struggled with for a very long time, and that was to surrender. Cold can easily take your breath away. It's not inviting at first, but here is where your breath work is important to remember. The idea is to calm your mind by focusing only on your breath, concentrating slowly, and then suddenly there's this bliss. It was calming, and all that mattered was being present in that moment. And when I came out of the water, I felt energized and awakened. This shift of focus made me feel stronger and completely in touch with my emotions. <laughs> I didn't feel the pressure or the stress of anything that was happening in the world. All I felt was gratitude. One awakens to this journey of self-exploration. We dedicate our energy and our time to remembering all that we are. Infinite potential, infinite love. A very important aspect and a critical aspect of this is, is community. Uh, finding our tribe, finding our brothers and sisters that are also engaged on this path of remembering all that we are. And to remember to just be. Something so small and simple can bring a community together and you can do something that actually makes an impact on everybody's life. Uh, especially for personal wellness, uh, for myself at least, it's very easy to kind of just go on a day-to-day -day basis, like I did, uh, without realizing, or you keep it into yourself. You come up with these new techniques, you're doing something, you try it out yourself. But I'm telling you, there's no greater impact for me, this feeling that I have right now, of gratefulness, gratitude, of having all these people come together. Brothers and sisters, different ages. This is how community of like-minded people can support you too. Find your community. There are many communities that will invite you, embrace you, support you, challenge you. And I remember when I met Matt, he didn't practice breath, he didn't experience cold immersions. And now when I observe him, I can see this radical change in him as he shared with me and as I experienced myself in my own life. And I'm inviting you to join our breathwork community. Come breathe with us. Come plunge with us. We are here all together as one.
We appreciate you so much coming here and accepting us and doing it the right way. We appreciate it. We hear you, and we're going to make some changes. Thank you, everybody. We're all in this together. We want to show support for those first responders. We're overwhelmed. This expression of kindness, it allows them to really appreciate the community's support. It's connecting, basically, with our neighbors because we haven't been able to with COVID-19. It's all about the connection that we meet with each other. The outside world, we can't control. But our breath, we can. It's always been with us, at our disposal. But only now, I've just learned how to not take it for granted. I continue to dive deeper and apply what I know to my everyday life because it's changed how I perceive the world around me and even how I view myself. Feel free to take your mask and put it over your eyes. And while you're lying there, I want you to start thinking about the intention as to why you're here and what you're looking to achieve out of this. It has influenced a new way of thinking for me and brought me back to me, a better me who I never met before. Okay, I want you to continue breathing, expanding your diaphragm through your nose but who was there all along. Expanding your diaphragm, expanding your lungs and chest. Discovering this version of myself has inspired me today to share my knowledge with others. So they can experience the same benefits that I continue to experience. Just keep on breathing here into your stomach, expand your body, expand your diaphragm. We don't need to wait for a miracle to improve or transform our lives. Two, out, two. Keep on going here, Andrew. Keep on going. Good job. A better life starts within. And we already have exactly what we need to get started. Keep on breathing into it, and breathing out through it. Keep on going. You just have to remember In, two, out, to breathe. In, two, out, two. Good job. Keep on going. <laughs>